All right. Does anybody have a deal that they did in the last month or so they want to talk about? Tell us about. Recording. Nobody? Okay. Really? I I mean what I say, and I'm not picking on anybody. You know, I expect I expect our vendors. I, I'm gonna come over here, by the way, just uh, just so I can see the screen and talk, and the cameras over here, but. Um, I expect the vendors to take care of you. One second, I got to turn on something else here. Oh, He's going to start telling me it's not serious by a couple of different times. So there's a two to three month project. And uh, it ended up taking a little bit. So, okay. Yeah, you just asked the question. That was the end I was even, I was in that project for one week. I feel like it was twice a week. It was good. But it was all the way to five That was about a year so. Okay, here we go. All right, so um, I am serious about uh, the vendors, um, and I've said this over and over and over, and uh, that is they've got to take care of the members. they got to do what they say they will do, and um, otherwise they're not going to be in this group. So I, I mean that not to be nasty, but to take care of you. You know, there's plenty of bad news on the news, right? And we don't want that. Can I just jump on that? Sure. I don't, did anybody see the, uh, the contractor that was in prison this last week? Uh, no. Got him? He, I guess for three years, he had like $25,000 worth of work left to do on some pr private primary home. And I forget what city was in, but it's here in the FW. They ended up putting him in jail for it, claiming that it was fraud, that he had not finished it. And they actually, normally they consider that civil and don't prosecute, but that might be more. Of so. This is my first time using that contractor. I have others that I normally use on a regular basis. So other than one of the ones that I use, I am showing up at least two times a week to the project. Uh, when I first started, I would set up a folding table and I would just work out of my project. Because if the contractor knows you're there on a regular basis or if they know that you're there all day, they're not going to let their crew stay away for more than a day or two. Yeah, there's probably going to be times that they'll have to move to another job and you have to kind of be a little understanding with that. But if your project goes a week without being touched, get on the phone with them. Yeah. Yep. I did. And, work. Still work. and they will have all kinds of excuses. And I realize stuff happens, right? But what many of them do is, and you should ask this question, do you have the crews to manage more than one property. How many are you managing now? And do you have the crews to take on mine too and still get it done in a timely fashion? And, and yes, they'll tell you that, but to them, oh, I got one guy there working. That's that's a crew, that's progress. I, I want them in and out. I mean, they spend so much time running back and forth between uh, different properties and stuff. And um, you just gotta be clear you know, you could really play hardball and have a very strict contract with deadlines, penalties going beyond the deadlines, but that's hard, you know? But Ryan's idea of 
you know, just showing up and, and uh, working, you know, they know you're there. They know you're watching. So I, it's a lot of work rehabbing a house and it's not just the work. <laughs> and you need to find out like, how is your contractor? Like I said, there's one contractor that I, use that I don't have to follow up on, but that's, you know, you probably know Blake Johnson, right? They send you a link to their portal. Their portal tells you who's going to be at your job site every day. Because it's the same thing that they use to schedule their crew. Not necessarily advocating for them because they have such a nice fancy portal, they just pay for it. So that's why I don't use that contractor every time because they are substantially more expensive. But you will get pictures at the end of every week and things like that. So you need to find out from your contractor, what are your expectations? Should they be sending you pictures weekly of the work done? That's probably going to help hold them accountable. On top of still visiting, that shouldn't take place completely on site visits. But communication, at the end of the day, it's all about communication. Yep. And honesty. Do they not realize that longer time means more on holding costs and opportunity costs and uh, so forth? They've got to know. I and mean, yeah. I mean, like, say they promised you a month and it takes five months. That's five months of rental that you could have collected, plus five months of interest on whatever the court of finance is. Yep. Yeah. Yep. yep. But more expensive. Who's, who's paying for it? You or them? It's you. Well, they don't care as much because they that... want to always start the next project. The next project is where they get that 20%. 30% down payment or, yeah, you know, the big draw. influx of cash. And so they always want to start projects, finishing the projects they still want to do because they want to get that final payment, but it's really that initial start. They so really that, want to start them. So when you start them, you actually pay them percent instead of just pay for their part of the, uh, you know, the oh, yeah. they are the labor as, as they finish the work. A lot of them will want 30%, like a third, or some of them will even, if it's a smaller job, half. I personally try to keep it to twenty to twenty five percent. Me too. The first payment. Twenty to twenty five percent. Ten to fifteen percent as the very last payment, which is only after final walk. Yeah, because really, when you look at the main difference between us and retail, is we traditionally we use draws and scope of work and things like that. There they go with whatever the bid is, and okay, here's the money up front, go get it done. And that's where a lot of times they. Unfortunately, see the tail lights, and that's the last time they see them. And this There's, is where, like, oh, right. I was gonna say this is where, like, I've had conversations, and you, you can't do this necessarily with the very first time you work with a contractor, but as you build relationships, is they have all the cards in their favor. I give them a down payment, and they run off on me. I can try and spot sue them, and I'm probably not gonna get that money back. But if they do a bunch of work on my house, and I don't pay them. They're going to put a mechanic in, and like we were just talking, like nothing supersedes a mechanic lien except for a tax lien. And so, you they have one of the strongest liens possible, and so they have all the cards on their side to get their money back if something goes wrong with me. But I have nothing really truly to get money back. For this so, this is another reason why I emphasize coming to the group and um tr trying to use the vendors that we have you know we're not going to have anybody here that's going to do that to you unfortunately right now we don't have a, a rehab contractor so if you have one that you're using and you like and they are trustworthy let's get them in here okay i ask for all time i got a slide on it if you're using people let's see if we can't get them in here and uh, get them introduce the group, have them come to the meetings and see what they think of the group and what the group thinks of them, you know, and then we'll talk about getting them in here. But um, that just, that'll reduce, certainly not a guarantee, but that will reduce the chances of you having, you know, the chance of getting ripped off, okay? So, um, but it, it, Brian's right. I mean, there's, there's a lot of things in their favor. That's why relationships mean so much. That's why doing your due diligence ahead of time means so much with any kind of contractor that you're going after. 
Yeah, but if you only pay materials up front and then they get the labor as they finish the work, that's good way to. That's, plus, plus that's a, a great way of doing it. Doing it. The good a, contractors will do that. You, at least in the past, I, that's it's been a while since not I've not all well, most will not, especially if it's their first time working with you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So you kind of have to build that relationship. Well, and if they're not very good money managers, they need the cash to pay the troops. Okay, so it's not just about materials. You know, you have to pay them something so that they can pay their troops on Friday evening, Friday afternoons. So, but you can certainly have the conversation with them. A lot's going to depend on how big they are and how much business they have and um, whether, how big a job it is, how well you know each other. There's a lot of factors in it. A contractor, okay, if they're, if we're considering using them or whatever. Can we come to you guys on the group and say, hey, do you know about this guy? And sure. Give him a thumbs up Absolutely. Or... I want you to do that. Yes, Robin. It will expire and become unenforceable. Yeah, new, so they have to refile that. a new one. And a lot of them don't do that because they don't realize that. They think they file that lien and it's there. So I don't know. It'd be a good question for Martin. Martin, yeah. To say, do you all check that? You know, I mean. Martin is coming to speak in October. So we'll, uh, we'll ask him about it. Okay, moving on. I, I don't think I've ever started this late on. But that was all good conversation. I mean, that was good. Um, so we'll move on. Welcome to the West DFW REI Group. The watering hole for North Texas real estate investors. And why is my... Click or not click. Okay. We don't need a, the camera up in the top, do we? You don't want to look at me. MacBook has uh, got a lot of, with the USB-C, you got to have a, adapters to do everything. Some of the stuff don't work very good with adapters. Okay. Um, for vendors and uh, volunteers that help us put this together, we thank you very much. We couldn't do this without you, so uh, we appreciate it. And uh, more than you, more than we probably say it. So please turn off your phones and are on silent. If you need to take a call, just step outside, please. Restrooms are not across the hall. This is, you know, still for the bank, but just go out and pass the, the desk there, past the front door, and, and that's where the restrooms are at. Uh, deal table and vendor table is right back here. And uh, we have all this, the sponsors, vendors, information back here. And for uh, first-time visitors, please go back there and look at all that and take it all. I would encourage you to reach out to every one of the vendors and... Um, See how you can work together. See how they can help you in your business. Our mission to provide the best real estate investor education 
support and community in North Texas? Is that support and community important? Like I was mentioning earlier, you know, if you hang around all negative people and you start talking about buying a house with no money, they're just going to laugh at you and, and uh, maybe say other things, you know, but, um, and that negativity affects your daily attitude. So uh, towards the business. People closest to you, they're the most critical. Absolutely. That's all super shut up, sir. So, so what's the shut up check? You know, you go get that first deal and then you ask Martin to blow that check up because he'll do that. <laughs> and then you go to whoever told you you couldn't do this and you tell them to shut up and show it to them, you know, prove to them that uh, it's possible. OK, that changes their attitude. Then there are those that never learn and they will always be negative no matter how much you prove to them. You're right. OK. Yep. But the community and the support's an important part of success in this business. So come network, learn, and do more deals with the West DFW REI Group. Sponsors. Again, we can't do this business without the sponsors and vendors in the group. And uh, these are the current trusted uh, sponsors that we have. And I'm just going to start and go around the room for those that are here. Let's start with Ryan today. Good morning. Welcome. We're a hard money lender. We will lend uh, up to 75% of the ARV. So if you have a $100,000 ARV, we will lend you $75,000. That will cover all of your rehab and all of your purchase price. We will cover everything but your closing costs. Um, we don't have a minimum down payment or anything like that. And I personally have worked on 101 loans so far this year and 79 of them we were able to fund at 100 percent so roughly 78 percent of our loans we've been able to fund at uh 100 percent so we would love to have the opportunity to do that for you guys i do have a sample term sheet on the back table back here if you want to pick one up just see what a two hundred fifty thousand dollar loan would look like um, that has all title fees, all lender fees, and uh, property insurance included on it. So you can see what holistically it would look like that you have to bring to close. Uh, and then on the reverse side of that, it has all of our rates and terms, as well as a step-by-step -step process on how it loans work. So try to lay it all out there to be as transparent as possible. Um, we would just love to be able to do business with you. That's a pretty good strategy there, young man, bringing those numbers with you, how many loans you worked on so far this year. And this is only July. I was trying to figure out the amount. I think it's roughly $32 million. So Wow. Pretty year. impressive. So give Ryan a call when, when uh, you have a deal. So remember, all if we have contact information back here, but if somehow you don't have that, it's always on the vendor's page. Okay? The website, the email, the phone numbers on how you can reach each of the vendors. So don't forget that it's on the vendors page. Thank you, Ryan. Okay, let's see here. Robin, good morning. Welcome. Um, and for people in this group, uh, it won't be, we're not going to buy the hard money loan to make right? Okay, we're looking at the long term. We're looking at the borrower that maybe you sold a house with seller financing, or you inherited a house that had seller financing, and you don't want to wait another 10, 15 years to get all your money. So we'll come in, we look at buying your notes, and we can pay you cash now. And we can close, we can get it done. 48 hours. I just getting some information from you. Preferably a copy of a note. A lot of people don't have some type of tech, but um, you know, whatever you can give them. Uh, and we'll do this nationwide. We have a lot of notes in other states, but of course, being here in Texas, I have no. Thank you. 
if you want. If you have any questions, please just hit me up. Give me a call. We'll talk about it. I also want to encourage you that if you're not sure about creating notes in one of these California, please, please talk to people and get the correct information because you can create a note that is going to hurt you if you have to go to foreclosure, if you do want to sell it. You're going to just going to be a bigger discount. I mean, there's a lot of problems that can happen. So don't just do what a lot of people, a lot of mom and pops do, and they think, oh, you know, the market's four and a half percent. We're going to give them, you know, we'll give four and a half percent or five percent. We want to help these people. Don't do that. Do that because they're really just hurting themselves. Maybe that's a topic coming up this fall. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Robin. Yeah. Dale. I have for these. Proposed the RML rule change from effective notice. Yeah, from the. Yep. Oh, well, you can call it. No, no, there, there's a rule change uh, that's being proposed. Oh, let me. Let me They're trying to um, make it really difficult for seller financing because you. The email that just went on. Um, I don't know what's going to happen with that yet because. It's still too early to tell, but I will tell you that's why I put that email, I put that post out there on our Facebook page. So I have a good relationship with HB. They've got a lot of people that I have started this uh, seller's coalition group. They started it years ago and been fighting. I mean, they sit down with the representatives in Washington. They go to Washington, D.C. and sit down and fight with these guys. And a lot of these people just have no clue what we're talking about. Uh, they don't understand that how this affects helping borrowers with affordable housing. Exactly. So it, it's too early to say. I sent the email like they asked. Uh, yeah. Well, Tim asked well, what the broke it. A lot of people did. I, yeah. And that's good. That's what we needed. That's a good thing. No, okay. But this is, this is U.S. So when when Dodd Frank first actually I think it was before it was released, they had one of the the uh, finance committee people come speak over in Dallas, and um, w we asked them how many how many mom and pops individual uh, investors are the cause of why you're changing the rules. And it wasn't, it was all the big boys, but yet we're impacted by those same rules. And it's it's all the big guys, the institutions that were screwing people. And yeah. um, it's a shame that they have to do that to us. I mean, that's our livelihood, right? That's how we make money, but we help a lot of people. And that help that so many need is gonna go away if we can't get their attention to, to change it. Without considering getting an RMLO license, you know, get some people training and all that, but then they also propose to put an inherent conflict of interest because if I'm the guy that's trying to sell a finance and not determine the affordability of the property I'm selling, yeah. if that can kind of shade it. You, you wouldn't be allowed to. No, you have to be okay. You have to be professional. Okay, I'll, I'll just look at that from that perspective. Okay. Yeah, that's you need somebody that's independent for you too. Yes, ma'am. I have a follow-up question though. Uh, when selling a note, if it's been in RML, like gone through an RMLO process, does that increase the value of the note by any? Uh, it does a little bit, okay. yeah, because then you have to actually qualify. But it's required. You got to use it normal. If you do no, more than three, yeah. I thought it was by law. It's, it's three. three. Yeah. I think it's three. If you do three or more. Or, or entity. But if you, if you sell to if it's an investor, 
per individual. Okay? Per individual. Yeah. If you own multiple entities that have done it, even if you're just a small fractional share owner yeah. in an entity, that counts as one for you. Yeah. Holy cow. Yeah. Yep. That, that makes this thing extra bad. They've been so, like five or six. It used to be five. And so they've been trying to do that, and they and that's been a yet, but that's what they've been doing. So my guidance is just do it. Just do it with everybody. Then you're better in a better position because your buyers have been qualified. That's what this new law is trying to put. Well, look down the law. It's a rule by the, oh, the SML or whatever. Yeah. Texas SML thing. So that's kind of what has me concerned. But that's going to affect all of us. Yeah. All right. Well, maybe that's a topic for another day. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Moving on here. Ruth Ann. Good morning. How do you buy notes if they can't be fine? Well, and, and so to answer a question, they may not find the original, but it's recorded. Yeah. So we just have to go by that and get that data. Well, that's kind of the problem. Every day, I come up with something new, amazing, it seems like this that we're doing. Um, I'm working right now on bank statement program here. It's a new deposit, and you know, figure you have for 70% or 85% of that money uh, to be usable to qualify. Uh, not a restaurant, that's only 30 but uh, we just for people to tell Uncle Sam they don't need any money. We just take their bank statements and keep them. Um, I have a deal where I tried to do it and, and borrowers had it was second home and they tried to sell the ticket because the second home had to have different income. And now that I'm calling it an investment property, I put that through because we can use the rent to help me sell. And that's not a second home. I can get close to the second, but not too long. I can say. But the other thing was, usually when we do a new slide, I would buy it from someone else to buy it. So we think about it. They don't have to pay our money to get out. And so all of a sudden, the storm hits the house and the the ceiling caves in, and we already know that this is bad, and all the good stuff. So I would think of last resort, but the Paul Ryan, because he knows a bit more about mortgages than I do, I think. And uh, so he couldn't do it, but I have a renovation program. So I'm just taking this guy for an FHA 203K and get a bigger one for the And that way he can. Buy out the ceiling as an old ceiling and just kind of stay here and talk about it. So, for those of you that are new here today, you should have realized the, the value in knowing Ruth Ann. You, if if it's not a hard money deal for Ryan, go see Ruth Ann. I mean, she's got so many different programs, and you didn't, but. Those that resources. Yep. No, trusted vendors. Yeah, it is under resources, trusted vendors. Yeah. So uh thank you, Ruthann. And uh let's see, who else we got here? Did I miss anybody? Oh, our our newest vendor, Andrew, but we'll talk about him in just a minute. Okay, so the other vendors that we have up here. August REI, um, Amy Sayer, they're a third-party servicing company. They service your owner finance notes. So if you sell a house with owner financing, she'll service that. She'll collect the payments from the uh, buyers. She'll pay the payment to the underlying loan. And hopefully she's paying you a profit check every month. If, if you don't have a check coming, you might want to rethink that deal, right? But uh, so they've been around a long time. 
this is not the right slide, Andrew. I apologize. I don't know how that happened. So, uh, Divine Homes by Maria, uh, Keith and Maria Cotton. Uh, Maria is a realtor over in, I think, Mansfield, Arlington area. And Keith is an investor that's got a big mortgage background, but he's working on getting his license. And um, they're happy to help with comps analysis and helping you find deals and so forth. Okay. Texas Bank. Uh, Ryan called really embarrassed to tell me that he's got some sciatica nerve problems and his doctors got him laid up in bed so he couldn't open the bank for us today. He felt really bad about that. So it's not your fault. It's not like you went out and did it in, on purpose, you know. But he loves the group and he loves coming to the classes. And you notice he's at every one of them when he's not laid up in bed. So um, that's why we're here today. Uh, select title, Martin Garcia uh, is our title company of choice. He's been closing our deals for many years. He's also been a, a vendor of the group for many, many years as well. And uh, if, if you have a deal, you need to go see him. He can do anything that you can throw at him as long as it's legal. Okay. Um, Roofmax, Lenny. I'm not sure where Lenny's at today. He's usually here. With a joke. With a joke. <laughs> Whether you laugh or not is... But uh, he's our roofing contractor. If you need uh, a free estimate, you're thinking about making an offer on a house, you need to go see, uh, if you think it needs a roof, let him go get you that estimate before you make your offer. Because if you didn't account for it and it is bad, then you're gonna see that deal may get really tough to do unless you got a really good spread. That's only happened to me once. I only screwed it up one time and had to call him afterwards. But fortunately, I had a big enough spread in it that it, it didn't hurt too much. Okay. So, uh, and the, the QR code in the center will take you to the vendor's page for everybody. And for the new folks here today, this presentation will be uploaded to uh, the, the bottom of the calendar event for today. So you can download it. Any questions on vendors? So speaking of vendors, earlier we we're talking about we need others. So if you have any kind of contractor that has supported your business that you think is a good fit for this group and you trust your grandmother with them, you know what that rule is, grandmother rule? Means that if I can send my grandmother to that contractor, without grandma coming back and calling me at two o'clock in the morning and chewing me out because the contractor screwed something up or charged too much or didn't do what they said they'd do, then um, if that happens, then they're not gonna be a good fit for the group. We want them to take care of grandma, don't we? We want them to take care of grandma, which means take care. Oh, really? <laughs> But anyhow, here's just some examples. This is not everybody that that uh, we're looking for, but these types of people that uh, we could use in the group. Okay, normally this is set up for uh, networking with, with vendors. We can go ahead and take, let's do five minutes since we're late. The intent here is you've seen the introduction by the vendors. If you want to go meet them, shake hands, exchange business cards, and then we'll get started. Maybe you got a burning question you want to ask them. Go ahead and do that, and we'll get started in five minutes instead of 10. In that case, where you could do multiple entities to be able to do more uh, for sale by owners, because the Dodd Frank report on this and asked from a couple of years ago. From the class I got from said now trust they all have the same PIN, so that means you don't want to mess with that. Okay. Right. They may say well trust is its own end, but the PIN is for that individual. Now if you have multiple LLCs though, but you're one of the managers of the LLC, 
does that limit you to three so overall? I think the other day when we were talking about this on the call, I said it's been a very long time since I read that those rules. And I don't remember for sure, but it seems to me like the question of three each entity or three total has always been in question. And that a lot of people thought that it was three total that you could do regardless of the entity because it's still the same person that owns the entities. Okay. So, you know, because I, I talked to a lot of potential sellers and a lot of them are not interested in selling at this time, but I'll keep you in mind down the road. That's cool. You know, build the bridge there. Uh, and that's my top to buyers. You know, talk to them, you know, get a better price if you don't cash. And, oh, I don't have cash. Okay, well, there's traditional financing. My credit's shot. And it's like, okay, well, there's also potential for owner financing. So, you know, is the, how much could you afford to put down and how much per month could you pay? And then what kind of property and where are you looking for to be at? Yeah. And those are the ones that manage my buyers. Well, man, very yeah, but what's that got to do with how many deals you can do? Well, see, if I have a number of potential buyers in a given area that want a specific zip code or a specific subdivision, then I can market the dog out of that subdivision. Uh, uh, okay, but what, how does that? impact your limit of three deals oh, no, without an arm alone. Wait, so you changed paths all of a sudden on me that, oh, no, that no, I missed. That no, went right no, over. No, this, this is what kind of yeah, leading me towards like now it's not. You yeah. realize there's a lot more, a lot more bigger pond or demand. Oh, absolutely. Or owner finance than, than those that mm -hmm. cash buyers are the most limited. Well, yeah, you know, yeah, most people don't have cash. And all my deals have been cashed this year. Uh, and then additional financing like we Dan provides. You know, some do that. But when you look at people that need a house, that want a house to currently run it, but because of this, this side or the other, whether it's self employed or what have you, things on the credit, you got a much bigger number of qualified. We're not qualified, but potential buyers. Absolutely. For owner finance. It will probably always be that way. Yeah, and if you can help them, and they say you, you have a burn the mortgage, burn the note party after they paid off, right? You know that that's a good story, good publicity. Yep. They tell their friends, "Hey, this guy, your buddy, has been for fifteen years, and it's all yep. taken care of." I'm gonna go to the bathroom, then I'll be ready. Okay. So yeah. you can only do three. Yes. Yeah. Per year. A year. Per year. Now. Owner finance. But but. Well, it's with the arm without an arm alone. Okay. But because they changed the rules. Not yet. RMO, no, well, well the, no, that's that's already there. With, yeah, without, without yes. Well, that's what my comment is to everybody. Use an arm alone. You don't have an issue. So you Just do it. The, but the proposed rule change regarding the regulators of Texas is to eliminate that as an option to make it where you can't use an independent you arm now, use, okay, where you okay. have to be licensed. Yes, you have to use a, a commercialized that, that has right. gone through. It's, huh? proposed. it's proposed. It's proposed. Uh, real quick, we got to get back at Yes. How much are postcards? Forty nine cents for the little one. Forty nine. You can't you can't beat that price. And then the mid size one's fifty nine. Forty nine. Yeah, but you can't buy a stamp for that. <laughs> it's such a deal. And you can cust make your own custom postcards to send. Well, do they come with a, uh, uh, AI? Uh, what's the difference between real world and leave world? Are there, can you pull a list? Let's, let's talk after. Yes, you can, but okay, folks, let's, let's get it going here. We're already late. All right. Fourth Monday of the month. We have ladies group. JJ Conway leads that group up. Call is at 545 and it's usually about an hour. Um, I, if you haven't been, if you're a lady, I'm, I have the honor of being the first male attending the 
women's group. <laughs> I asked if I had to wear a wig. Said no. <laughs> but anyhow, uh, fourth, fourth uh, Monday evening, 545, lasts about an hour. JJ leads that up. But they like to talk about the unique things for women in the real estate investing world. And they have some really good conversation. I know Robin's spoken on it before. Ruth Ann, have you spoke on that? No? Okay. Um, but they have some really good conversations going in there. So I would encourage you to attend that if you haven't. Okay. Why are we here today? Topic of the day. I'm going to apologize again to Andrew. I don't know. I must have grabbed the wrong slide and put in here and uh, didn't put his logo on the sponsors and vendors slide. But um, we're going to talk about Texas rental market trends for 2024. Uh, Andrew is our new property manager for the group. And uh, he's taken over four properties for me now. And uh, look forward to working with him. He's got a really good program. He's going to tell you a little bit about that, but he's also going to talk about uh, trends here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area for 2024. Is that important? Okay. Um, you know, he's done a lot of research on this and the, the, I'm not a big research guy, so I appreciate all his work and the minds that, that are able to go do that kind of work, but I'm not a big research guy. So it's hard for me to, to stay focused on it, not to mention I don't have all the education that he's had, but the, the trends, you know, where are we going in 2024 is so important, right? And actually, this is going to really be good, I think, to tie into the topic for next month. You know, the trends that uh, Andrew identifies today may help us. I'll be listening closely on how I can use that in the topic for next month to find those hidden gems in 2024. You know, we're, we, do we find much on MLS? Anybody? Anybody buy, finding deals on MLS? I have. Yeah, I mean, yeah. there may be some out there, but we're looking for the hidden ones. We're, we're looking for the ones that there's not a lot of competition on, right? We're, we may be looking for the ones that maybe they don't even know that they're a seller yet. And they're out there. So we're looking for unique opportunities to be able to make an offer and buy that hopefully there's not 50 other investors making an offer on. And that's what happens with a lot of the MLS type leads. And we're looking for the ones that nobody knows about. So uh, Andrew, I'm gonna turn it over to you. I'm gonna let you uh, give yourself an introduction here. I'm not sure that if this is gonna work when I click on Canva, but we'll try. All right. I haven't, haven't tried it on Canva. Yeah, and, and by the way, I'm impressed with this. I've never created a presentation in Canva. I've always used PowerPoint, but this does extremely well. Animation don't work? Oh, I, I create animations all the time and images, but you're saying that what doesn't work in a slide? Well, like the PowerPoints just slide up. Like a transition. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, I see. Oh, I, okay. Animations between slides yeah, and stuff. Pitch deck and slide. Okay. You want to click it right, and see if uh, it... Let's see. Oh. There we go. It works. Okay. Uh, good morning. I am Andrew with Brands Company Real Estate and Property Management. We have been in the Parker County, Tarrant County market for the last 50 years. I'm a third generation. It was originally started by my grandfather 
John and Barbara Bryant. So we've done the whole roller coaster and mountain of real estate. Uh, we've done land development. Uh, we've done remodels. We've done flips. We've lo had long-term holds. We've got a family uh, or a home in Weatherford that was actually built in the 1880s. And uh, we did a remodel on it. One of my favorite jobs, so much craftsmanship and artwork went into this property. And then we've had a tenant in there for nearly 20 years at this point. So we've had uh, all kinds of experiences with it. Uh, we typically are leasing about four to six properties a month. So the information I'm hoping to bring to you is just a history of experience focusing on renting properties every single week and then managing those properties. How do we get those properties leased quickly? How do we get the best tenants in those properties? And what features and amenities and things do we need to focus on to get the right property? Because one thing I don't want you to do is spend $50,000, $100,000 on a property, and then you can't get enough rent for the property. Uh, we have people come to us, I hate to use the word all the time, but frequently, because like I need to get $3,000 for this property in rent, and the market just doesn't justify it. So the information I'm giving you today I really hope it's going to enable you to make the decisions up front, set yourself up for long-term wins down the road. Uh, real estate agents, I don't know if you've ever heard a real estate agent brag about how long they've been in the industry. I've been a realtor five years. I've been a realtor for 20 years. Uh, it's a badge of honor because most real estate agents don't make it. Well, I've got news for you. Uh, most investors don't make it as well. You have to be really savvy. You've got to be really smart. I'm hoping today to give you some information so that you are one of those realtors who makes it long-term. Currently, uh, that's my wife, Cassie. Her and I and Michelle are running the property management side of our business. Like I said, it was founded by John and Barbara in 1974. Currently, we have three locations of operation. We've got an office in Springtown. We've got an office in Weatherford. And then I'm based here in Fort Worth. However, mm -hmm. I am in Parker County probably four days a week. So the main goals of this presentation, like I said, is I'm going to be giving you the information you need to know where to focus your attention. I was doing a, a focused study for an investor in uh, Brock who said, I want to build 56 townhomes in Brock. Is there a market in Brock for these townhomes? So I did a market feasibility study for him to generate the information he needed to make a $20 million decision. Uh, my goal today is to give you that same kind of information for the Fort Worth market. So we're gonna be discussing population flow, we're gonna be discussing rental prices, short-term versus long-term rentals, uh, the amenities that attract renters, and the best ways to advertise your rentals. Population flow, right now the DFW has 6.7 million individuals in the DFW. That's more than 12 states in the United States. That is an immense amount of people. I don't know if any of you have ever taken, been courageous enough to drive around the DFW, but it would take you a long time. I used to manage a marketing team out here, and we had six marketers hitting only industrial facilities. And people told me, are you worried that you'll run out of uh, space? I said, we'll never run out of space in the DFW. It's that large. It's incredible how big of a market we have. But today, I really want to focus on the Fort Worth market. We're West DFW. This is the biggest majority of West DFW, so that's what I want to focus on. Right now, Fort Worth is the 12th largest city in the United States. That's something to be proud of. That's a unique thing that doesn't happen very often. And then of that, we have 997,000 people in Fort Worth proper. We are on track to take over Austin. Whenever I was in Austin, I was in Austin for 10 years, had a blast, loved the cold water, Love the free spirit of Austin. Love the, the land. It's a beautiful place. I was shocked at how amazing it was. But I'm glad to be back up here because the, the traffic, the liberal politics are getting crazy down there. But uh, they were always bragging. 160 families a week are moving to Austin. 160 people a week. 160. 100. They said that for 10 years. Right now in Fort Worth, we have 59 people a day moving to Fort Worth. That's a lot, a lot of people. That's a lot of opportunity right there. Of that, 34% of those families are going to be renting. Why are, uh, do you, do you need, okay. Why are people moving to Fort Worth? Job opportunities. We've got some incredible companies. 
out here in Fort Worth that are doing amazing things. We've got uh, Boeing, we've got uh, Lockheed, Bell, Amazon, Alcon, Coors. Uh, in a previous industry, I had the privilege of uh, working with manufacturers. Coors plant, if you ever get the chance to see the Coors plant in action, uh, cancel your plans and go. It's incredible. They've got seven lines of production. And of those seven lines, six are filling built beer bottles. Every one of those spinners on those six lines fills 2,000 bottles of beer in a minute. So every minute, they are producing 12,000 bottles of beer. I didn't even know people like Coors. And they are killing it. I mean, their production's incredible. Uh, American Airlines, the low cost of living, as everyone knows, the cost of living is going up, which is really one of the things that we're going to discuss is affecting the market and the, why we've got more people going to renting than ever before. We got the stockyards uh, for entertainment. We've got Sundance Square. We've got Seventh Street. We've got a ton of gardens and trails and museums. Fort Worth has got an incredible amount of amenities that provide entertainment. Whenever I uh, moved to Fort Worth, I went to TCU, Texas Christian University, and I thought I had just like joined the like the circus of entertainment culturally and, and people would complain that Fort Worth doesn't have much entertainment and I came from a small town where we used to throw rocks off bridges for entertainment. We used to tie uh, skis to our feet and drag ourselves behind four wheels for entertainment. So you get me here and I thought I had just like reached New York City. It was an incredible opportunity for me for entertainment. Uh, education opportunities. A lot of people are moving here for uh, education opportunities. You know, TCU, TCC, and then also the faculty opportunities as well, and then uh, family activities. I don't know if you guys are familiar with how safe Fort Worth is. You can go almost anywhere in Fort Worth and feel safe. That is not the story in San Antonio, Houston, and Austin. We have a very unique situation here in Fort Worth that we should be very proud of, that we've created an entertaining, safe environment for our families and citizens of Fort Worth. You got your finger up? The zoo, there you go. We got the, yeah, by the way, feel free to talk. I am not a pastor and I'm not a professor, so I get short-winded quickly. So if you've got something to talk about, feel free to, to mention it. Oh, rental prices. One of the things I want to discuss is where are rental prices going? So this will come up a couple of times in this presentation. Uh, but right now, with the high interest rates of purchasing properties, uh, we're really seeing a drop in the amount of home buyers. I've heard as much as 90, 95% fewer transactions than there was two years ago. That's an incredible thing. By the way, you know, if you see a realtor, pat them on the back, you know, tell them it'll probably be better next year, buy them a coffee or something because he needs some encouragement right now. Uh, we have included in that, we have a bunch of people who bought short-term rentals and they're converting them into long-term rentals. So we're actually getting a increase in people needing rentals and an increase in rental supply. So it's actually a, a fun time to be in the market. Uh, days on market has increased right now. Uh, we're, these long-term rentals are staying on the market a little bit longer than they used to be, but that's okay. They're still turning over pretty quickly. Uh, the average rent for a single family home in Fort Worth is $2,350. And that is surprisingly down 1% for year over year. So 12 months ago, it was actually 1% higher. So when you say days on market, are you talking about the rental market? So what I'm talking about is if I start advertising your property today, how long it takes me to get a tenant inside the property. You see average days on market. Right? That's the next slide, but I'll go ahead and tell you anyways. It's uh, 23 to 30 days. So, uh, right here is a, a graph showing you. I did a recent, uh, pulled a, um, data from the entire city, and I said, what is the average two-bedroom renting for? So the average two-bedroom condo in uh, Fort Worth is renting for 28, or sorry, 1,800, uh, and the reason that is, is because, and the, the reason there's a big jump from the three-bedroom is because a lot of the two-bedrooms are older. The average age of the two-bedroom condos is 40 years old. That's shocking. There's a lot of old condo townhomes in this town. And then the average three bedroom is $3,000. That's the, the new luxury amenity condos that we're seeing. Uh, the average single family home that's two bedrooms for one thing is an average. There's not a whole lot of them, but uh, that's gonna rent for 1775. 
a single family home with three bedrooms, 2100, and four bedroom plus is 2500. This uh, two weeks ago, I had a guy ask me to do an analysis for him on a five bedroom house that was 1700 square foot. I don't know where they got five bedrooms. I was like, don't buy it. Those rooms are probably tiny. There's five shoe boxes and a kitchen is probably all that house is. But anyways, when I see those numbers, it helps you kind of understand the size of a house versus the rooms needed for it. Uh, short-term rental market. The short-term rental market's probably been hit hardest over any aspect or market in the uh, uh, renting industry. Uh, the reasons that is is because there's increased competition. Uh, back in 2020, everybody wanted to go stay at a short-term rental. Everybody was working remote. Uh, nowadays, uh, a lot of people are having a harder time just meeting their bills at the end of the month uh, with their increase of housing, with the increase of fuel, with the increase of groceries. So uh, a lot of fewer people are uh, traveling for leisure. And so the, there's been a drop in demand for that. There's been an increase in uh, code enforcement. Fort Worth historically has some of the strictest code enforcements for short-term rentals. Once again, when I'm saying short-term rentals, I'm referring to Airbnbs, VRBOs, and vacation rentals. Uh, and because there's also, there's 20, no, there's 3,200 short-term rentals in Fort Worth. Because there's so many of them, there's an increased need for individuality, for uniqueness, for amenities that attract people. So when you are focusing on a short-term rental, uh, you really want to find out what is the unique piece of this property that makes this stand out in such a way that it would uh, create the demand that it needs to be a short-term rental. Yeah, in the news, they're talking about Plano uh, updating the ordinance to require them to pay a registration fee and application and mm -hmm. all this, a lot of regulation regarding short-term rentals in Plano. Mm -hmm. uh, seems like possibly trying to reduce the number of Absolutely. There. Yeah, hotels hate it, for sure. But also, you're looking at neighbors hate it, too, to be fair. Uh, Fort Worth has been doing that for a long time. Uh, and uh, and they do, from what I hear, they do a much better job of enforcing it. Austin has uh, 30, so 3,000 licenses available, but yet they've got 7,800 short-term rentals in Austin. So um, a lot of people are operating without a license or certificate in Austin. Uh, and I'm sure there's and more than allowed in Fort Worth as well. But they, but you're taking a lot of risk whenever you do that. So one other thing is inconsistent revenue and high cost to operate. As a person who's operated several Airbnbs, that's something that's on your mind every single week. So it's something that you need to make sure that you have a stomach for is can I handle this amount of risk? There's a high risk in short-term rentals. Uh, for my one in Austin, I had to produce $3,800 of revenue every single month before I made profit. It's a lot of cost. But on the other hand, the house often made $5,000 plus in revenue. So it's also a bigger reward. So something to consider. Long-term rental market. Uh, as I was saying earlier, the average days on market is 21 or 23 to 31 days. Uh, one thing we're finding is renters are taking longer to commit. We're doing more showings than we have to do, usually. It used to be like three showings per unit. Now it's about six showings per unit. So uh, these the everybody is trying to stretch their dollar and trying to get the best deal possible. And so we're finding them taking longer and uh, more time to commit to actually signing a lease. Andrew, uh, in those rentals that are taken 30 days versus seven days or you know closer to the low end what do you see the difference in the condition and the location and the amenities of those properties do you see that the 30-day ones are just well maintained and maybe cleaned and versus totally rehabbed and really nice properties i mean do you see a difference in you know, shortening the days on market? Yeah, I find um, a lot of it is going to be what are the expectations of the landlord? Because uh, I can give you the information that you need, but at the end of the day, it's your decision on what you want to try and get. I've got a, a community of townhomes that we manage. He wants the we, he wants to collect $2,100 a month in rent for a three-bedroom townhome. Uh, 
the market just isn't there. So he'll let it sit for 30 days and then he starts price dropping, price dropping, price dropping. The, the truth is they rent at 1900. If he puts it at 1900, it'll rent in two weeks. But uh, so we're, I've, I think there truly is a tenant for almost every property. If we can market it properly and then price it properly, or we're finding homes that are not priced properly, just sit on the market. There's too many options. Yeah, a lot of times with selling houses, you see price drops that are under contract and it's back on the market. That, that kind of puts the impression that there's something wrong with the house. Does the same thing apply to a rental for why is the price even dropping on this one? Or, hey, I found me a bargain. You know, how is it on that? Well, renters are are just like buyers. They're, they're, yeah, everybody wants to think they're dumb or they're, they're inexperienced. But the truth is, they have the same access to the same information that all of us have. So if they can look across the market, they say every one of these homes is renting for 2200 and this guy's asking for 2400 I like the house, but I can get a better home for $2,200. i am going to go for the home for $2,200. So, so we're finding price. The, the renters today are very price sensitive. Like and even $50 can make a difference. I had a price listed at uh, 1950 for three weeks. Didn't I got one inquiry. I dropped it to 1900. I got three inquiries in the next four days. So uh, it is all right now. Everybody's pretty price sensitive. So you really want to be on point with your rent rate. Uh, one thing we are finding on a national basis is renters are getting behind. I've heard as high as 15% of renters are paying late or missing rent payments. Uh, from our experience, what we're personally getting is more like 4%. Uh, however, uh, one of the ways you can prevent that is doing a better job pre-qualifying, having higher stringent requirements for them to get in, uh, making sure that uh, they've got good reviews and referrals from their previous landlords, things like that. Amenities that attract renters, we, um, I, I, every day I'm talking to somebody and they're asking the questions of, uh, what kind of internet is available at this property? Uh, what type of hardwood, what type of flooring is their carpet? Is it hard flooring? Uh, the townhomes that we manage, everybody says, you are the only people who have solid floors throughout the entire property. We love that feature. People like solid floors. Uh, refrigerators doesn't come with appliances. Yeah, that's something that people consider. Yes. How do you mean solid floors? You're talking about like hardwood or ceramic or? Yeah, anything yeah. that isn't carpet. Oh, so okay. vinyl, linoleum, you know, wood. Wood's not as common anymore. Tile for new construction, things like that. Although I personally live in a tile house. My feet hurt all the time. I'm walking around in flippy floppies. So it is nice to have some type of cushioning for your feet. Uh, a granite countertops, you know, how well of a finish out does the property have? Garbage disposals, that's kind of just a, a convenience factor. However, uh, unfortunately, garbage disposals are like the bane of landlords because that's the one thing that uh, causes the most maintenance requests. We, uh, In case you're interested, uh, the top like three maintenance requests we get, uh, number one is leaks, plumbing. Number two is HVAC. And, and number three is miscellaneous things like uh, the, the the paper towel rack no longer is falling out of the wall or toilet paper things come on loose or things like that. Uh, accessibilities uh, to community, things like pools, walking trails, dog parks. People love those. If you can find a house that's like, so the place I'm at right now has a walking path near it. Uh, the community isn't providing it, but the walking path is near that subdivision. So that's a feature that they're not even paying for that's a bonus. So what kind of features are surrounding the property as well is something to consider. Best place to advertise. Now, I actually, uh, about five months ago, we wanted to see where was the most bang for our buck and energy for advertising. So we sat down and we started tracking all of our leads as they came in. And we tracked 100 leads that came in. And we tracked them. Um, how many, who did they inquire? Did they call, text, or email? Did they show? And then did they sign? And I took that information for you. So um, we found these websites to be the best websites to advertise on. Uh, social media, most of the time that's going to be posting on Facebook. We didn't really get much off the other social media platforms. But Facebook groups, you know, uh, Parker County Real Estate, Parker County Room Finder, 
you know, things like that. You know, if your church has a uh, website or a Facebook page, post there. Uh, places where you could just get your advertisement in front of people on Facebook Marketplace. Unfortunately, one of the things we find with Facebook is you're going to get a lot of uh, wasted leads, a lot of inquiries that are not going to uh, pan out. However, we did close like it was one of the top actually closing mediums. And you would want to do more of a higher priced Facebook advertisement because if you're going to advertise at the, like $1,400 or less, it's just a, it's honestly a waste of time because you get some, is this still available? Is this still available? Is this, a, yes, it's available. Would you like to see it? Crickets. So uh, you do kind of want to be picky whenever you're advertising on Facebook, but we did close a lot. So we get a lot of uh, responses on Facebook Marketplace. You know, is it still available for anything you sell on Facebook? Yeah. yeah. Not just real estate. Fair. So one of the, uh, when I tracked it, 49% of our leads came from Zillow and uh, about 50% of our closings came from Zillow. Facebook had 10 leads of the 50 and uh, of the 14 we closed, it was five units closed on from Facebook. Uh, Homes.com did really well as well. It provided 10 leads and then Realtors also provided about five leads and they closed one unit. So, uh, so that's like 5%. So, you know, it's, um, we think it's nice to advertise on the MLS because it syndicates well with all the other websites. Yeah. Uh, however, um, the majority of Richards aren't actually going to find it on the MLS, but because the MLS um, broadcast information so well, we liked it. Oh, it's a sweet tea. I would love a refill, by the way. How many, how many sites does MLS syndicate to? Uh, I actually don't know, but I would say probably more than 12 or 15. And like Zillow, Trulia, Redfin, they're all going to draw it from the MLS. Homes.com, Apartments.com. The negative about that is so many of them pull them, and then they don't ever get up. They don't update. Yeah. They are getting better about it, but yes. I mean, sometimes I'll get a call. Hey, I found a house I really like. Can you inquire on it? And I'll find out that it was sold two years ago. Uh, it doesn't happen often, but it, it does happen. So there is a uh, inaccuracy factor when using those websites. That's one of the best things of the MLS is the accuracy. So, so saying, you know, Zillow. So we specifically um, have a management account with Zillow. So that way people can message us directly. And uh, so it, to us, for us, we specifically have an account with Zillow that we advertise. But yes, I will pull for this. So what are the services that Brian's company provides? How can we help you out? We focus primarily on residential property management. Uh, we do have some commercial storefronts and some warehouses and stuff that we manage, but our goal is to be a residential property management company. I guess I shouldn't say our goal because we are, but our focus is that. So we do uh, single family homes. They are a slight maturity of our portfolio. And then a multifamily, that's gonna be quadplexes, uh, duplexes, triplexes, townhomes. Uh, we've got one community that's up to 36 townhomes. They're actually the ones who are building 56 additional ones. Uh, and we're going to be managing all of that. Uh, we also do short-term rentals for a very select few properties. It's, um, the reason I, I try and like emphasize that it's for a very few properties is because it takes a special property to be a, a, a wildly successful short-term. And the risk of uh, doing a short-term versus the reward, if you're going to take the risk, I want you to get the reward. So. Uh, single family services, we're going to be doing, we list the property, we uh, do all the tenant screening, we show the property, we collect the rent, uh, we manage the maintenance and repairs. So uh, anytime that the property, yeah, hey, my uh, front door isn't working well, can you get somebody out here? Hey, I found a leak in the shower, can you have somebody out? The toilet's not working properly, can you have somebody come out? That's the things we do. That's included in the services we provide. Uh, we don't do any of the, uh, I, like, I don't take 10% of the plumber's bill. I don't mark everything up. Uh, and the reason we don't do that is because we want to be completely, like, 
on a focus plan and you can budget. Uh, I had a guy reach out to me. He goes, man, I wish I used you. At the time, it was kind of beyond our service area. Since then, I've moved further east, and now we could cover that area. So I work with a company, well, rhymes with McGraw, and um, he said, we collect 1600 in rent every month, but our average payout is eight to 900 because they've got all these hidden fees. They collect, they, it's a 6% rate, but anytime there's a maintenance call, and he goes, and a lot of these maintenance calls, it could be as, as simple as a light bulb, and they're going to send their handyman out there. So they're going to be charging $65 an hour plus a uh, travel fee to, for a handyman to switch out a light bulb. I'm going to tell your resident, it's your responsibility to change the light bulb. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it is. I mean, yeah, it's. I had a resident ask me to uh, go change the HVAC filter. I said, it's your responsibility to change the HVAC filter. I don't know how. Then you need to learn how or hire a handyman to. It's not my response. I'm not going to go change the HVAC filter for are it or these, charge the landlord for it. Are all these exceptions covered in the lease agreement? Yeah. Uh, the lease, actually, you'd be amazed how much is covered in a lease. Uh, when we read through the lease, it is very thorough. It's off, I think it's a 16, 17 page document. So if you're using the, the Texas Realtors lease, uh, it covers so much that you wouldn't even expect. I had a guy ask me, what if they um, put a boat in, in the yard and I don't like the boat? It's covered in the lease. Uh, what if they uh, have too many vehicles there? It's covered in the lease. What if they've got a guest that's staying there too long? It's covered in the lease. Uh, did you have a question? No. Uh, we don't have to make an excuse. You should do walkthrough inspections ever so often. Yeah, yeah, that's in the lease. And then especially when it comes time for renewals, because we want to know that they're taking good care of the property. Uh, but oftentimes you're going to find uh, that the, the squeaky wheel needs the most attention. So the person who's paying late, the person who's uh, requiring the most attention is often the person who's probably not taking good care of the property. So, um Financial reporting. Go ahead. Sorry. Will the listings legally watermark their pictures? Have you had any issues with fraud or blanket? I we personally haven't watermarked the the, the photos um, because I don't like the way it looks. Yeah. Like I mean, there's I hate to use names, but Prism Property Management has a big like pyramid, and I just I think it it takes it distracts and takes away from the photos. Um, I think the best thing to do is to educate your residents and the public of how to avoid fraud. And the best thing that it is to do is to reach out to the listing agent, check the uh, county records, see that you're making sure you're working with the right person, and also check the uh, a real estate license. You know, if somebody has a real estate license, they're obligated by law to be honest to you. Uh, I, there are situations of real estate fraud, especially leasing. You know, I've already paid this person eighteen hundred dollars in rent. Uh, I'm I'm here to move in, and no, you're not. Uh, but that happens very rarely. I mean, have, have you? How often do you run across that? Honestly, in about twenty years, one time. Yeah, yeah. I, I said, if it's too good to be true, it is too good to be true. I see Facebook advertisements. You know, get a four bedroom house for eight hundred dollars a month. Too good to be true, but. I've had yeah. somebody try to do it on my house, but they didn't. Uh -huh. What's your yeah. question? Yeah, I was listening to an interview of a law enforcement official regarding somebody doing a 29 day short term rental, uh -huh. then retaining the realtor and having that realtor believe that they were the owners of that property, that they had a death in the family, they needed to sell, so they moved back east. And uh, it came this close to actually closing the house. Well, the realtor should have asked for a power of attorney for it. Or something. There should be records. There's there, there's um there's safeguards in place. That shouldn't have happened. But also the title company should have caught that way sooner. That should be pretty apparent and obvious. So, but on the other hand, we I'm sure we've all been following that case in Hawaii where they built a house on the whole wrong lot, and then they sued her for some reason when they they were wrong, and she won fortunately, but it took a while and cost a lot of money. Uh, so these things do get straightened out eventually, but it is uh, unfortunate that that does come up sometimes. Uh, multifamily, uh, whenever we do manage multifamily, we do take care of the entire property. 
uh, like I said, we're not um, marking up the maintenance projects and things that come along. Like, and if there is a situation where I am managing something that's beyond our scope of work, I can communicate that with you. Uh, we just built a, a storage facility on one of our communities. Uh, I managed it. And I said, I'm sorry, but this is out of my scope of work. I'm not going to manage a construction project without getting paid for it. So we negotiated a rate for me to manage the construction project. Um, we do collect rents and late rents. So if uh, it's the third and people haven't paid, hey, Tommy, um, are you planning on paying rent this month on time? Yeah, we're making the phone calls, we're making the texts, we're making the emails to make sure that your rent is collected on time. Uh, because it's important. I mean, you guys have mortgages to maintain, and we want you to be able to maintain those mortgages, or we're not going to have a business relationship with you, um, unfortunately, and that's not the case we want. I want the best for every one of you. I mean, it says a lot to me that you guys are willing to work five, six days a week and then show up first thing on Saturday morning to work more, to learn more, to educate yourselves, to protect yourselves from making mistakes in the future. I'm really impressed with the turnout today. So do you, what happens if that tenant doesn't pay? Are you filing the pay or quit notice where it's the owner having to do that? Yeah, no, we are doing that. So we're filing the notice to vacate. We have to actually uh, drive to the property and uh, put it on the property. You know, take, ideally, the best thing to do is put it on the inside of the door. I don't like going to the inside of the door, but uh, I guess that's part of my job. So sometimes I have to do that. Uh, but we're um, mailing, we're uh, emailing, and then we're delivering as well. Um, for the short-term rentals. We go to court. Yeah, we're, sometimes we have to go to court. Absolutely. Oh, so you go to court, too. It, not often, not often. Maybe five times in 20 years have we had to go to court for a big scenario. Absolutely. Uh, one of the things, whenever we are doing short-term rentals, is we're offering a uh, top-tier service. We have the uh, best marketing available. Uh, we are super host status. Uh, you probably can't see it from across the room, but uh, right here we've got a rating of 4.94. Um, in the years that we've done it, we had one average review, and that dropped us out of a five. Uh, but we, aside from that, we've all had five-star reviews. Uh, all of our properties are ranked guest favorites. Uh, all of our properties... Um, basically have five-star reviews because we don't even have that one property that was a 4.9. And then one of the things we focus on, uh, ideally, is taking these properties and preparing them to focus on longer-term stays. Uh, the properties we manage, we have an average um, occupancy rate of 89.6%. Um, so if you're looking at a, a year of days that this house was on the market, most of the time it's going to be rented 327 days. Whenever you stay rented that much, everybody makes money. So that's our goal. We want to add these people in there for as long as possible. We currently have a guest in one of our houses that has been there for 136 days. Wow. She just keeps extending it, keeps extending it, keeps extending it. And uh, the reason that happens is we've got people who are moving out here who are building homes. They want to manage the construction of their homes. And then construction delays happen like that. One gentleman who already left, you know, they're told this project will be finished in two months, and it takes six months, five months. So they're having to stay longer. And then also, uh, if you have a, a, I call it a fire victim, you know, your house is gonna, has a fire incident, you've got to go stay somewhere. We've got a property ready for you. Uh, you've got a bunch of insurance money. Sometimes they get fifty, sixty, seventy, eighty thousand dollar checks, and they they've got money in their pocket they just need somewhere to stay so we'll provide them that service here's the team uh obviously that's me on the end uh michelle my mother is right here and then my wife cassie is also on the team uh she is also a licensed agent as well so uh why choose the brands company uh we are a local service company uh, we have focused on this market for 50 years. Uh, if you hire a company from Arlington, I, I literally have a property in Brock that's our neighbor. I'm speaking to the, the listing agent, and she goes, I don't know. I've never been in there. I'm in Frisco. Why would you lease a property, you know, two hours away from you? 
that's not what we do. We focus on this market. We are a local property management company. Uh, our goal is to mac you, maximize occupancy for you. Uh, there's a lot of units that we turn over where I'm working on. Uh, I did one last month where actually this month where uh, the home became available July 1st. It was empty July 1st. I had a tenant in there July 9th. Oops. I mean, we're really, our goal is to get somebody. Now that, to be fair, was a little bit too fast for us. We, we, we were having to do extra effort to get that done. Um, but I ideally, I've got one coming up in August where I'll, it'll become available August 1st. I have a family in there August 12th. That's the plan we have already. And we're working on getting a lease signed with them. Do you, do you guys maintain? Go ahead. Do you guys maintain a list of uh, interested renters on the ongoing list? Uh, well, we because we have frequent inquiries, we're communicating with people, and so uh, I do have a list that I use, but uh, most of the time, I don't even have to go to that list because um, the you know the longer somebody's on the list, the more likely they found something else. So as they, but we can also tell them about properties coming up. So uh, you just had one where you said that property won't fit for you. But I've got another property that sounds good. What about this one? It's going to be available in uh, September. Just talk to me every two or three days. It's going to be available the end of July, I think. And she called me every two or three days. I've driven by this house looking at this. You know, and so we tell them when, once our tenant gives their 30 days notice. And I ask them if they only have to give a 30 day notice. But I tell them give us 50 days notice, give us 45 days notice. I said, if we were to, if my owner decided to sell, I tell the owner, let's give them 60 or 90 days. And so I, I asked them to give us the money, but the lease says they have to give us 30 But no surprise fees, like I was saying earlier. I don't want you to be expecting a $2,000 check and you're getting a $900 check. Uh, I wouldn't want to be treated that way, and I definitely don't want to treat any of you that way. Uh, we prioritize personalized service and attention to detail with efficient maintenance solutions to and transparent communication. I can't stand, I shouldn't say this out loud, I can't stand doing renter verification because I have to call all these property management companies and I get a teledial system. You know, if, if you want to verify rent, if renters, call three, leave a voicemail. You know, if you're a current tenant, call four. If you're looking for a property, call five. Yeah, it's like, I just want to call you and get you. So that's the service we provide. If you call us, you either get myself or Michelle. It's not some teledial system. Um, also, we do treat uh, your properties as if they are our properties. We had a situation this week where a renter calls us, hey, it's an emergency. I need to get an electrician out here. This house keeps tripping breakers, and I'm afraid it's going to burn down. Well, I started doing research. He goes, I got a quote for you, by the way. I said, okay, thank you. Well, this quote doesn't have an electrician's license number on it. That's my first alarm. Uh, the second one is it doesn't have a company name on it. It's got his name. I'll give it away because I'm already upset with the guy. His name's Juan Perez. And uh, he's an unlicensed electrician trying to do work here. And he gave me a $1,500 quote. I go, I need to get a second quote. Uh, I get a second quote. I show the first lecture. So I go, what do you even think about this? So he goes, he's quoting work that doesn't need to be done. And he's uh, overpriced and he's not even licensed. Okay. So we verified that this is a, and then um, one of the things he quoted was he wants to do run power to this br breaker box. And she goes, you already have AC on this breaker box. Why is he running power for a second AC unit? So I go, what's the second AC unit? I go, Oh yeah, I've been um I've been hot, so I'm running extra AC units in the property so that we can stay cool. And we're like, well, we're not spending fifteen hundred dollars so you can run portable AC units in the property. I'm not going to charge my landlord for that. That house is designed for a specific use. It's got a specific system installed in it for the residents in this house. Everything's designed properly and intact and certified and inspected. We're not spending, we're not going to charge our landlord $1,500 so you can have an extra window unit. So we really do our best to evaluate all situations. I, I, I thought the house is going to burn down. 
You know, I mean, renters are, are crazy sometimes, but anyways, so. Owners are too, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> and probably property managers are yeah, too. <laughs> so, uh, our goal is to maximize your profits by minimizing your cost. It's keeping your units occupied. Uh, one of the things we do is, as we've joined this chapter, as we're offering special uh, rebates and off discount opportunities for the members, first thing we do is for your first property, whenever we go to list and lease your property, we're going to offer you a $200 discount off of our services. If uh, we typically do our first discount rate at four properties, uh, for the members of West DFW, we're going to do a 20, that 20% 20 reduction at three properties. Uh, we're going to give you access to MLS information if you need it. Most of you probably already have it. And then uh, free assessments uh, for property owners. Uh, yeah, I'm going to try and do my best to give you as, uh, assessments for potential properties, but mainly that's focused on properties that you already own. Because I don't want you to get a situation like one of my clients who has already purchased a property and he's going to lose $100,000 on it. I don't want you to be in that situation, but um, we all have limited time. So we, I'm going to do my best to offer that service to you. Why is she going to lose $100,000? Because he spent too much money on it up front. And the crazy thing is he's using the same agent to get him out of the situation. Yeah, they didn't buy through us. <laughs> yeah, they didn't buy through us, yeah. A lot of people come up to us after the problem's already been created, and we're going to do our best absolutely to get you um, out of that problem, but we can't fix everything. Uh, another situation, by the way, if you're talking to anybody who has inherited a property and doesn't know what to do with it, talking to anybody who's moving out of town and they don't want to sell their property because they've got a 3% interest rate, uh, and you're talking to anybody who is looking interested in investing in real estate or has multiple, multiple properties, you can't keep up with it. Those are the ideal target people we're looking for. So if you got any friends and family who are saying things like that, um, say, hey, Brands Company Real Estate, property management are the people you need to talk to. These guys are local. They're awesome. They're going to save you a bunch of money, and they're going to keep your properties um, occupied. Uh, best way to contact me is uh, through my cell phone. That's 512-621-4906. Uh, leave a voicemail. Leave a text. Uh, I will get back to you. I, my goal is to answer the phone 24-7. Uh, I just, that's the way I'm raised. I'm, I'm here to provide service. I'm uh, not going to answer it 24-7. Yeah. Uh, yeah, unless, um, unless I'm wait. on a jujitsu mat or in church, it's the only time that I really don't have my phone number. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so there's a bunch of cards, and I'll pass them around as well. So um, thank you for your time. I hope I've been able to provide information for you that will save you money in the future. Uh, I'm available 24-7. Uh, what's your question, sir? Yes, we do. Um, in, in single family, the reason we provide that service for multifamily is because they've got so many properties. Um, so what we will probably do most often and say, hey, this property is becoming available. Uh, we'll get you a quote, and this is our preferred vendor. Um, and these are the recommendations he's made. But if you want to haggle with him and, and do that, you'll probably end up paying him because we can't finance the project for you. But um, well, we're going to introduce you to the right people to get the work done. Uh, these people that we use every week, so we trust them that they're going to take care of yeah. Do I have two traditional We do much more traditional than that. Yeah. I, yes. I'm back to work here, so to say. I'm family in Curtis Park County, West Fort Hills, or how far east do you want to go? see all those. Uh, right now, we're really focusing on you know, Springs on Hazel, Lake Worth. Uh, White Settlement, Fort Worth, then uh, Granbury, uh, Crescent, Weatherford, Middle Wells. That's the majority of the destination. If I got one, I'll answer the question. 
So yeah, for one rental, we definitely take that on. I'd say that's probably 20%, 25% of our business. And it would be uh, a 10% management fee, and it's 50% of the first month rent to do the uh, listing and leasing service. Are you requiring John Hickman to lease this site so we can kind of review it to make sure it lines up with the way you want to look at it? lines up? As far as your relationship with the tenant, it looks like they do. Yeah, actually, we had the conversation with the tenant. We had the conversation with the landlords of, of you know, what it typically looks like to install it. There's a management agreement with the landlord, and then there is the tenant agreement for us and the tenant. And all the forms can be put out by the state of the country. Do you have any ad splits? Ad splits? Mm -hmm. um, I, I've done it some, but it's not something I would do for uh, a professional service because I just feel like it's going to be a lot of communication, it's going to be a lot of service, and it's going to be not very much revenue, honestly. Our, I be completely transparent. Uh, our ideal customer is a property that's going to rent for more than fifteen hundred a month. So you know, past splits are probably renting rooms for nine hundred dollars a year or something. So that's kind of below our ideal focus line. We do it for a few people. Yeah. I don't clean, but yeah, we, we do handle it. And we also handle lawn services as well. And even maintenance requests. Have y'all ever been any of the thousand for us to make that like more affordable tax for clients and that? We do have some. Uh, uh, they're, they weren't tiny when they were built, but we do have some uh, tiny houses that we do manage. Robin, you have a question. Robin, still have a question? Uh, I'm glad you mentioned that. I forgot to say that. Is um, one of the things we're finding is people are staying longer. Our average uh, tenant resident stay is 36 months. Right, great. No beer. I wish we were. But, <laughs> but no, we're uh, we are a branch company real estate. Like I said. Uh, been there for 50 years, but we're not part of Brian Brian Grant. I um, hired a, a company called Bryant Electric once, and uh, they didn't do that good of a job, unfortunately. <laughs> I am a member of Darko. Uh There's a Fort Worth branch, so we got something in Arlington. I had a guy ask me if I would be interested in it. It was basically like tickets to South Dallas right up. And I was like, we don't want to do It was a double deal. But anyways, I was like, I can't provide a good service on the east side of Dallas. Yeah. So uh, we prefer that. Yeah. So I'm thinking either uh, Emerald or Burger. Like that family. Yeah, I, I do not have that. Yeah. Okay, was that good? Thank you, Andrew. And Michelle, welcome to the team. Hey, Andrew, do y'all do uh, lockbox, or do y'all physically go out there with the prospect of uh, having it? We show all, all of our own units. Um, we do have lockboxes in case contractors and cleaners can get in. Okay. Any other questions for them before we move on? Okay. Moving on. Next month, stop overpaying secrets of finding hidden house gems for 2024. So um, if anybody has any uh, comments, input for me on this, I'm going to be creating this event from scratch so uh i'm i'm all ears if you have anything that that's working for you ideas if you want to help contribute but it should be a really good class so uh it's it's on the calendar now please go get registered ahead of time uh you haven't heard me say this much but i'd rather you register early 
and then you can go back and unregister if it turns out you can't come. Okay. Uh, we have a lot of no shows and that's not to put any point fingers or anything, but it's hard for us planning to not know how many people are coming. So uh, if you think you're coming register and if you have to unregister later, that's fine too. Okay. Okay. Membership offers. So I have three offers today for you. And, uh, you know, this is pretty simple. If, if you just want to pay by the month, it's 20 bucks. You're going to get the same benefits as a monthly member as you would annual. Okay. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. You can go click on the view all benefits link right there. Unfortunately, my, uh, laser doesn't work on the TV screen. Or you can just go click the QR code, scan the QR code and, and register there and get started. But if you want to save yourself some money, okay, save 25 bucks off the annual membership. Annual membership is 175, which is peanuts for what you get. You can save $25 off that using that promo code, 25 off. That's today only. That makes it $150 annually. And it's only Twelve fifty a month is what it equates to, but you got to buy it annually. Okay. QR code you can go scan or click either one, whichever you prefer. Offer number two. You can become an annual member. Go write us a great review on the group. Receive three extra months of membership. So now you're getting fifteen months of membership. Okay. And that makes 15 months for the price of 12. That makes it the best price deal, $11.66 a month. Come on, you can't even get a website for that. Okay, that's, that's cheap. And then offer number three is $175. But you get four one-hour consultations with me. Now, what do you think that might be worth? I think it's worth a fortune. Quick question of the year. Time with you, um, because in this membership, you get access to all the uh, software that you have online. And so that's an opportunity to learn from you. It's your hour. It's your hour. You can do, we can talk about anything you want, real estate related. Uh, in that hour okay um but you want to know the mistakes i see people make come to the call and not be prepared haven't given a bit of thought to the questions you want to ask we're not there just to waste an hour of time on your part or mine i'm busy i'm making time for you i want to give it to you but you got to prepare for it the other thing they're not doing is they're not getting in the game. You got to get in the game in order to generate questions in many cases. So get in the game and start implementing the things you're learning. But to me, that one hour, that might do a deal for you. If you work it right, if you're out talking to sellers and generating leads and making offers, you know, you may make money off of one hour call, but you get four of them. That, to me, that's the best value offer today. Sir? That's something I help encourage, especially the newer members, to to the consultation. Now, I haven't done mine yet, but I have things I want to, but I want to make sure I don't waste your time on my side, would be maybe have a list of potential topics to discuss, whether it be wholesaling, private money lending, marketing. You know, there's a whole slew of things that can be discussed. And maybe make more of the same topics that you're open to, and then say, well, This is not all inclusive. I can talk to you about more stuff. And that way, they might say, Oh, yeah, this wholesaling thing seems pretty interesting to me. How do I get into it? That might be an hour or more discussion uh, for them. But real estate, there's just so much to it. You got single family, multi family, short term rental. So, so that's a pretty good idea. What I, what I could do is make a list of potential things, but 
what I don't want you to do is take the shotgun approach to this business. I mentioned it earlier. Pick something, go master it. Okay. Don't talk about commercial property one day, rehabs the next, and wholesale in the next. You're not going to, unless you have a different mind than most people, you're not going to master anything bouncing around like that. Okay. Um, wholesaling is where most people start. I happen to have started on subject two, but you know, you can do wholesale and wholesaling is a very simple strategy. What applies to everything we do marketing, right? If you can't, or lead generation, if you can't generate leads, you have no business, right? In this business, we have to have leads. So uh, marketing could be a conversation to have with everybody. So, but I could put together a few topics of starters, you know, conversation on things that I think you should maybe look at doing. Hey, Tim, if we, if we recently uh, renewed, is there a way to tap in maybe half of that? Because I know there's a discount on that as far as choosing consultation. But what I would love to do with that is just specific business issues and the robots and things like that. So I still offer hourly consulting. Um, this is this is in reference to joining as a new member. Okay. We give me a call there. We'll talk about it. But you know, this is for new members joining. I'm trying to give you incentives to join and become a member of the group. Okay. So again, I think to me this is the best value. Not the cheapest, but the best value because you get the out four hour consultations. That could be worth a fortune. But anyhow, you have your choice, one, two, or three. Some people like to save up front. Some people like, like to have the consulting. And um, but it's up to you. You can click the QR code or the links and, and get started. So I need all of your help. I'm promoting the group and uh, the vendors program okay so i put together an offer for you so when you invite a guest to attend our meetings with you um well i reworded that and messed it up invite a guest to attend with you when they become a member of the group then uh you're going to receive one to three months extra membership so the, the difference between one and three is, are they a monthly member or are they an annual member? So if they join as a monthly, you're going to get one extra month. If they join as an annual, you get three extra months. Plus, you're going to get $25 real bucks cash in your, your bank account, so to speak. So all members earn $5 in your real bucks account when you register 48 hours in advance to this meeting. This is a Saturday only meetings and attend. So when Michelle checks you in, you get $5 deposit. We're going to give you 25 extra when you bring someone that joins. Okay. $25 in your bank account that can be used for membership renewal the next year. So you come in on a good deal. It's even better next year. As long as you got to attend though, right? I mean, if you attend 12 months in a row, that's 60 bucks a year at a minimum. But if you earn the 25 extra, you could have a lot of money in your bank account is what I'm saying. But it can be used for workshops. It can be used towards uh, membership renewal, so forth. When you invite a guest that becomes a vendor, you'll receive six extra months membership. Now your annual membership is getting really cheap if you're getting six free months of membership. And you're going to get our 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 world famous world famous group coffee mug. Life is good. Okay. So just a couple little bonuses there. We need your help, is what I'm saying. Um, we want those vendors that you can trust your grandmother with. We want to get as many of real estate related people, people that are gonna take care of the investor community, take care of this group and help us be successful and profitable in our business, okay? Uh, we don't want a custom home builder 
that's going to come in here and, and have astronomical prices because that's not what most investors can afford to do, right? We have to have good quality service for a reasonable price. I'm not saying cheapest price because cheap price usually doesn't work in my experience, okay? We have to have a reasonable price that still works for investors. So invite a guest that becomes a member, get one to three extra months membership and $25 or rear bucks, or invite a vendor and earn six extra months of membership plus the coffee mug. If you like what I see or what you see, please tell the world, go to Google, write us a, a short little review. Um, it's pretty simple. Probably take you one or two minutes unless you're just putting some real serious thought into how good you're gonna write it. Yeah. But, but uh, seriously, we need the help. Reviews are important. You need to, I'm, I've been guilty of this for many years, not asking, I'm asking. You should ask too in your business. Ask Don't, I, yeah, <laughs> I, you're right. Ask for five star, but I want you to give us a review and be honest with what you really feel. And, you know, if you have recommendations and stuff, I'm all ears. I'm not afraid. I've been doing this 24 years, so I'm not afraid. Just tell me. But not writing one's not helping us. Okay. It's just like Andrew with his billions of five stars and one four. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it, and somebody went in, and, uh, and just to tell you, if you go back and look, in the early days when we started a group, some girl went in and wrote some bogus review on there that I never met. She's never been to the meeting. She's never been in our system. And she said, I said things. And it's not true. You know, so so we need all the good stuff to balance it out. And, and there's not a thing you can do about it. You don't want to get upset about it, you know, other than you always, I don't know if anybody, does anybody do reviews? What's the worst thing you can do when you get a review? Ignore it. Not respond. Even on bad reviews, you want to respond. But you want to respond professionally. And, and you know, you don't want to just ignore it, though. Write your response and won't sleep on it for a day or two. Before yeah. You, before you answer it. Well, I've learned I those things don't get me upset. Yeah, you know I mean, I'm not going to go write something that I regret later. Okay, just cut, we're almost done. A couple important links here. Facebook group, if you're not already on the group uh, or our YouTube channel, please join us. It's also on the home page at the very top menu bar. You'll see all the social icons. If you haven't joined us, please do. Uh, local resources. We were talking about this during the first 30 minutes. You can scan the QR code, go straight there, but there's, you know, big page of links and things that you will help you, especially new folks, but uh, there's a lot of stuff in there that'll help you get get started. Oh, on a good note, we have a new uh, addition to the team, affiliate partners is what we're calling them. You all have heard of Propelio. Well, they're coming on board as a partner and they're gonna start coming to meetings and they're going to have a, a table set up and they're going to start doing demonstrations. Plus, they're going to do some periodic training for you. So um, look for that probably starting next month, but more to follow. Investor Carrot and, and Rehab Valuator. Uh, what a great set of tools, websites, Investor Carrot, uh, as well as Rehab Valuator, which is a repair analysis tool. Now, I'm telling you this because... Rehab Valuator is a free download for rehab analysis, okay? That's free. I emphasize free. There's no reason for you to not try it, right? But the group has the premium upgrade of the website, which has the repair estimator built into it. So everything's integrated. As I get older, I'm tired of all these separate pieces of things that are all over the place and you have to try and connect the dots, right? Uh, it's hard to keep up with that. So even though Rehab Valuator is free, 
it's outside of your other tools. And it's like with RealFlow, RealFlow has an analyzer built into it as well. So I choose not to use Rehab Evaluator just because it's exterior, external to the systems that I use. So something for you to think about, but it is very good. Did you say up front that you could actually do that on your phone? Yes, the, the premium upgrade. So it's a website, it's not a mobile app, but it's web optimized or mobile optimized is the right word. And you can log into your account on your phone and walk through and do a rehab estimate on your phone. Other tools I use, lead flow. So um, I'm gonna emphasize the free stuff. You know, if it's free, why not try it? Just think some things, some things are worth looking at, some are not. Is it worth looking at things that help us generate leads? Yes. You know, even the tools that I use, you know, I'm always looking at other things that help me with leads. Lead flow is one of them. This is a new system. It's a new, uh, what do I want to say? It's a new piece of real flow. You all heard me talk about real flow. And they are similar, but here's the difference. Because that Mark started to ask me this earlier. The difference between lead flow and real flow is lead flow is designed for an app and it's designed for the newbie in the business. All they want to do is generate leads. They don't care about a CRM, a management long term. They're not going to buy the property, hold it rehab it. They're not doing those things. Lead flow is more about driving neighborhoods or just generating leads. And they're using AI technology to do that. Real flow does AI too. It's the same lead source. Leads are coming in with real flow, right? Lead flow is lead flow. Lead flow is lead flow. Lead flow leads are not going to real flow, but you can get leads in real flow too. Uh, it's two separate programs. They don't cross in any way. Same company, but when you sign up for lead flow, you get leads from lead, lead flow. They look very similar. The platform is very similar, but they're giving you additional analysis data and stuff in here. Okay. The, I'm not trying to make this long, but trying to make you understand. The best thing you can do is go try it if you, it's free. I mean, and see what you think. But they are using AI technology. And what they're doing is, just to be clear, because nobody else is doing this, is they are pulling public data to analyze against every seller and every property address. And I can't remember the data points, but it's many, many hundreds, if not a thousand data points. That's all public information. Missed a credit card, missed a car payment, filed for divorce, inherited property, missed a mortgage payment. They're taking all that stuff and they're scoring the leads with a score from one to a thousand. One means they probably just bought it today, moved in, so they have no interest and um, selling the house, right? Closer to a thousand, that's a, a very likely candidate that have a high propensity. This is the word real flow and lead flow uses, high propensity to sell within 90 days. So those are the people that you wanna go tackle and try and market to. They are the most likely to sell within 90 days, okay? okay. The higher the number, so you know what I've been starting to do is focus on 650, 700 and above for those leads. The one, the other thing that they both added recently, real flow and lead flow, is deal alerts. So when you go set up a search, you can say, yes, you want to receive deal alerts or deal notifications. So whenever there is a change in that 
property address that matches your filtering. So if I chose AI score of 650 and above, and now something happened to that address that now makes that a 700 score, I get an email notice. That's kind of a cool thing when you talk about lead generation and you're looking for leads. I kind of like that feature. You still, and, and they have skip tracing. Uh, built right in the tool, so it makes it really simple to go go do. If you do Gill Machine, Gill Machine has unlimited skip tracing for free. But you're paying upfront costs a lot more. Yeah, this is a bank. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you got a way of how much are you using it, what kind of volume are you doing, that kind of thing. Within Lead Flow, there's three different levels. Once you get into the trial, you're going to want to look at what those three levels are. Okay. The third level is almost the same thing as real flow. But I can tell you the, the price don't, if you, if you do the trial, don't, don't get sucked into the renew now option in that trial without coming back and talking to me because the best price you're going to get real flow on the planet is what I have. Yeah. Nobody gets the price I do because of my time I've spent with real flow almost 15 years now. How effective has the lead flow been with getting these deals done? I'm still playing with it. I I need to spend more time on it. I I have seen some things that make me wonder about it. I'm just being honest with you. You know, part of the issue may be Texas is a non-disclosure state. That issue or that situation, not necessarily an issue, it's an issue for us, but um, that may impact some of the results that you get. So you're going to have to really look. I'm really trying to understand their filtering criteria better. You know, you can really filter with, uh, they have, I don't remember how many, but you can really filter. And if you get too many filters, you get no results. You get no results. So you got to really fine tune that. Does real flow come with an AI system? For AI? I can get I can get you AI zip codes. How much are they? I can get you, I think, a couple. But if you buy zip codes, if you go beyond the allotted, I think it's seventy five dollars. How often can you change? Anytime you want. I, I don't know if they'll <laughs> knowingly agree to every month, but they'll tell you you can change them when you want to. So, I think so. I got to go back and look. That's right. I got to go back and look them up. Send me an email. Okay, Propelio, as I mentioned earlier, this is for investors. This is the only MLS tool that you want to be using. Um, this is true sold data. And like I said, I'm excited that they're coming on board. I can sit here and tell you about Propelio, but they can demonstrate it and, and show you how everything works. They've just come out with a new software update, so it's a lot more to it. Um, but you can also pull motivated seller leads list. So that's a good extra tool besides just sold comps, okay? Pulling motivated seller leads. And you can do that every day. So more to follow on that. Real flow, we were just talking about that. If you've never seen real flow, go watch that video. I do a video overview of real flow. So you can see just what all is in there. Uh, we have a few folks in the group that are using it. But uh, the biggest challenge I see with people taking on real flow is they don't learn how to use it. Okay. It it's there's a lot to it. But once you go practice, just like with the home page and the members area, go use it. Get in there and use it so you learn it and you understand what's there. But real flow, I do training on it. I do training on it because I don't want you to quit. There's a lot of value in that tool.
Is it perfect? There is no such thing as a perfect software tool. But to me, it's one of the best uh, CRM tools for real estate investors. There's over 200,000 users on this tool. That should tell you something. I've been on it 15 years. That should tell you something. But it's not perfect. Okay. Service that I offer, weekly and, and monthly mentoring, discounted for members, uh, brainstorming, consulting on deals, hourly consulting on real flow. That's how serious I am. You know, I I believe in this tool. And I, I'm not going to get started any more than I already have. There's a lot of value in using real flow. If you want a joint venture with me, just click on that, submit your deal here and submit all your info. It's not a special site. That's my premium site with the group. You're gonna enter your property as though you're the seller. And then I'm gonna look at it. And then we're gonna talk about doing a joint venture, whether or not there's enough in the deal there for, for both of us or whether or not you can just go do it on your own. Okay, I'm not big in trying to convince you that you should partner with me. I wanna help you if you want my help, but if I think you can do it on your own, I'm going to tell you that. Help wanted. I need help. I need office help. And I need group help. So I need the uh, my buying, buying houses side of things, as well as in the group helping us. Uh, Jana is, is graciously helping us uh, on Saturday mornings. But... There's more to it than Saturday mornings. We appreciate your help, Jana. But I need in-office help. Most of that's going to be in-office. Some of it could be virtual. But I, that's what I need. I need an office assistant. Sarah moved back to Washington State. Got to have strong computer skills. Got to be comfortable on the phone. You're not doing cold calls. You're not calling sellers. Um, that's not what the job is. Got to be an organizer. Got to be willing to learn. Got to plan. Got to help keep me out of trouble. But it's really hard. I'm running the group and trying to buy houses and mentoring and stuff all at the same time. It's not working really well. There's a whole lot of things I want to do, and I can't do it by myself. Okay? Michelle helps me with all the behind-the-scenes things. I'd be really lost without her. You what? Provide, Provide food. <laughs> that is an important thing. The brain marks on his stomach. <laughs> food does. Food does provide a lot of guidance. Anyhow, if you know anybody, have them reach out to me. And that's it. Go buy a house. The answer? Yeah. Do most listeners read 